Hello, and welcome to another episode of No Small Roles, a D&D podcast where there are no small roles, and Google searching us will just give you pictures of bread and toilet paper. <laughs> it's unfortunately true fact. I'm David Knight, your Dungeon Master, and I'm joined by these gorgeous people. Everybody say hi. Hello, hi. gorgeous people. Hi. Hiya. Hi. Um, can you all hear that? Hear what? what? It's the theme tune. Oh. Here it goes. <laughs> nice. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice Seize your sheets and d20 Let's play d and Your haggard character swaggers with daggers in each hand You've all discussed what you must, but even better lay plans Take a turn when checks are missed Roll initiative Brandish your blades don't fail your saves. No risk too great, no choice too bold. This is your story. No guts, no glory. Confront your fate with every roll. Every Inside one who will pay the price, then chance of success or rest upon the dice. No risk too great, no choice too bold. This is no small rolls. So Having been spotted in your infiltration of the estate, Juna managed to charm the cook, Jizana, and you all headed out of the front gate, realising quickly your mistake, as it had an arcane eye, magical surveillance, that watched you all leave. Deciding how best to approach the luncheon the following day, you all attended cautiously, only to be greeted cordially, with little more than some snide comments and sly looks from the staff. Whilst Juna helped prepare food and Orin fixed a broken arcane vegetable plot, uh, Gwendolyn and Enkidu were entertained with conversation by Lady Cerise Vondell and her son Trimped. Gaius, disguised as the young lord, began to sneak through the house, hoping to find some answers. And in the lady's arcane study, he found a round table seemingly used for divination and a note that read, Flames, floods, the dead rising, and titans tearing the earth asunder. He was almost caught by the younger brother, Oscan, but managed to wordlessly send him away. Lots of middle fingers. Luncheon is served, and Gaius readied himself to perform for the household, uh, and after an awkward start, he did win over his audience and was offered a 10-year contract by Lady Vondell. As Gwendolyn pushed for a tour of the estate, Juna struck up a conversation with Jazana about the missing doctor, seeing through the lies that the cook knew nothing about the disappearance. So, Gwendolyn, um, as you keep encouraging for a tour um lady vondell is uh yeah she's quite happy to do that she uh she nods she smiles she says yes of course let me just go get my walking boots on um and you're left alone with trimpton and kidu for a moment um what are you what are you doing what are you chatting about well isn't your mother very welcoming trimpt um yes she does uh she does try to be to, to nice people of course of course yes uh, i suppose you're very close to her well, as, as close as any son is to his mother, I'm not necessarily in her pocket, shall we say? No, of course. Well, you're a young man about town doing your thing. And I must say, um, I'm very interested in the, the decoration of your home. It's, it's got a very um, minimalist feel, hasn't it? Yes, it's, uh, it's uh, quite sparse at the present. But uh, you see, we've been doing a bit of redecorating, so it, it just made sense to clear things out before... Before bringing anything new in, you know. Of course. Have you been storing it anywhere in particular? I suppose it's quite hard to find places to put things, or...? Uh, we've sold a lot of it, and, oh. uh, um, yes, a few things have been moved here and there to uh, other houses we have. Oh, of course, yes. And it's good to, to just, you know, get rid of everything, just, just sell it on... On a market, we have a, a lovely market in my hometown. Um, it's it's by the eBay, and it's a lovely market. I, I've walked around it a few times. Is that so? Is that so? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if you had any any suggestions on on 
on how we could be redecorating. That would be, you know, you, you're clearly a, a woman of, of fine taste. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's 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 very lovely. Um, and I, I suppose, I mean, do you know what? I'm just ever so curious how somebody of of well, your your attractiveness, if you don't mind me saying, hasn't already got himself married. I don't mind at all. No. Uh, well, you know, it's it's. I've just been hoping for the right person, you see, and I I, I thought I might have had that with uh, with a, another young lady in the town, but uh, well, I, I just don't think it's going to work, unfortunately. Oh dear, why is that? Well, she is a very sweet thing, but uh, again, I just don't think we're quite we're quite as compatible as as one would hope. We're uh, I'm sure it would be wonderful for a short time, but in uh, I think over the years we'd we'd wear each other out, and that that's that wouldn't be fair to her. Hmm. Interesting. It's uh, it's good to get to know a bit more about you, Trimped. Oh well, it's it's been wonderful talking talking to you, Gwendolyn. Pardon my intrusion, my lord. If you'll excuse me. Um. Yes. Yeah, because I'm sat between them, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, you're you're, you're like <laughs> awkwardly in the room, like third wheel. I can't help but uh, wonder what it, it is you like to do around here for pleasure. If you mind my curiosity. I uh, know nothing about you, and yet we are here having lunch with you. Uh, Tillersham is is quite a, a wonderful place. Of course, it's it's a little bit more rural than than uh, other things, but uh, it, the the views are just glorious. I'm quite attached to my uh, to my stallion Thaddeus. You might you, you might have seen him, uh, the, the the great white horse. Uh, yes, beautiful beautiful beast. Um, I spend a lot of time riding, exploring the town and uh, and and the wider land. Mm. Uh, just checking in on and on the farmers and 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 so on. It's you know it's it's. I do feel as a as a young lord, it's it is my place to make sure that I'm not as far distant from from the common folk as 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 other generations have been. I see. I see. Thank you. Very important to get to know everybody. Well, yes. It's uh, not saying that necessarily I'm I'm the greatest of friends with everybody in town. But it, you know, it, being being of nobility, and I'm sure you understand, Gwendolyn. Sometimes it is quite difficult to make friends with, with people who see you as a, as a highborn, as as sort of a less of their people, if you know what I mean. Um, after, after all, at at some point, uh, when I do inherit the estate, uh, the tithes that that they give will will of course fund, fund me here, and 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 I completely understand people holding that against me. Like that's. That is understandable, and so I just make sure that I'm as as welcoming and as 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 kind to them as I could possibly be. Insight check. <laughs> insight check. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Make an insight check. Um, is that wisdom or is it? Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's full of it. Uh, it's insight is. It's a four. Doesn't matter. It's a small roll. <laughs> Does a small sausage roll? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and like, obviously, your opinions of nobility and Kidu are that like they often, quite often, talk a lot of shit. You're like, yeah, here he goes. He's you know chatting about how everyone's giving him money and and all that kind of nonsense. He's trying to make it out like it's it's a really fine thing, but yeah. I'll give him a warm smile and say, that is an admirable position to take, my lord. And I grind my back teeth very silently. Well, you know, you could always um, find a trade yourself and find a way to help support your family. That's um, what my father did, and it's worked very well for our town in Pryden. That is uh, also an admirable pursuit, yes. Um, I'm sure you have many talents. I, I'm a, I don't think I have, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> uh, it, is a, it is a shame, but uh, no, in... Uh, what I can do, at least, is uh, encourage trade with other noble houses to come to this town and, and try to put money back in, in that way. Sort of pr- promote our, our, our ideals, the, uh, the, the, the trade. There is quite a lot of farmland around here, so, so we do quite often, every, every few months or so, have, have uh, sort of quite a few other, other uh, settlements and establishments come through to... to, to to buy from from our people, and that's that's always encouraging. So I'd I'd, I'd like to uh, I'd like to expand that, perhaps. Um, obviously, <laughs> again, I'm I'm not too much of a business minded fellow, so it would it would help having having somebody nearby who could uh, who could help in in those kinds of things. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, when are we going to get to see this tower? Shall we go? Let's. Yeah. He um he starts getting up, and as 
as you're all making your way towards the door, Lady uh, Von Dell comes down the stairs and she's <laughs> changed, not only changed her boots, but she's changed out of her robe as well. Um, she's in like, almost like a little gilet type of a thing. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> gilet, <laughs> even in this world. In world oh, gilet. <laughs> still have gilets. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> Just going for a walk around the estate. I've got to look the part. Um, <laughs> So yes, um, as you're all uh, heading out, she um, she does stop at the uh, the top of the stairs down to the servants' quarters and does poke her head down and she uh, she says, "Jizana, Jizana," which is of course just about when Juno is asking questions. Uh, so Jizana very quickly turns away from you, Juno, r- sort of sensing mm-hmm. that you're not quite believing anything she's saying, and sort of scurries away. Is hey, yeah? Um, is the is the bard anywhere? Um, I've not. He's not up here anymore. I was, I was rather hoping to to get to know him a little bit more if we were if we were to take him on. Um, Jazana sort of scurries through trying to find you, Gaius. Uh, where have you ended up? Have you gone back to your little room? Have you ended up in the kitchen? Uh, yeah, I was just nibbling on, you know, a bit of a dish that was left for me to chomp through. So I'll be eating mm-hmm. away and drinking as much uh, free wine as I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you hear this exchange going on, like sort of shouted down the stairs. Um, and Jazana comes back through. And she finds me, like, tiptoeing on a stool, like, trying to reach the highest, like, bottle in the wine cabinet. Yeah, she's like, all right, you, you don't, you, you can have just the plain wine like the rest of us, come on. Uh, the lady would like to uh, carry on have conversation with you if you're, if you're up for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. I'm up for that and, uh, and more. Let's go it. Yes, uh, well, off you go then. All right. David and accents, why do I do it to myself? <laughs> Mate, so... <laughs> Um, but so, um, yeah, sort of, Gaius, you head on upstairs, and, and then the little party of you, uh, Lady Vondell, Trimpt, Enkidu, Gwendolyn, and Gaius, sort of start taking a stroll out through, out through the, uh, the grounds. Uh, back in the kitchen, um, Jazana is sort of, like, pottering about. The liar. The liar. <laughs> Beef, it's on. Obviously, you guys have almost been, like, helping tidy up and clean some plates and things. Like, she she just gets on with tidying something on the opposite side of the room. But but what are Orin and Juna doing? I want to go for a sneak around. <laughs> you want to go for a sneak around? <laughs> yeah, that's probably a bad idea. Before Orin goes, I am going to um, message into his head. I'm just going to, like, whilst mm-hmm. uh, Jason has sort of turned her back and is washing up, I'm just going to point at Orin, kind of, in a, like... A little gnarly point and message into his head. She no, she knows something about the doctor, and she's a dirty liar. Uh, remember, with message, you do have to say things out loud. <laughs> so I'm assuming it's whispered. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> I am loving the arc of this relationship. It goes from, oh yeah, come have a cup of tea, to you dirty liar. <laughs> you liar, you. I've got your number. <laughs> Can I change what I do or is it too late? Now? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go and sort of potter around in the corner and just sort of, yeah, do the same thing. Point at Orin and kind of mutter to myself in inverted commas, but say, oh, doing the washing up. She's a dirty liar. She knows something about the doctor. I don't know washing up. She knows about the doctor. Ah, what other secrets they're keeping here? And then I shoot her in a wink. Uh, as you're both sort of pottering about, whispering to each other from across <laughs> the other side of the room, um, in walks a tiny little boy. He's not tiny, he's like 11, 12. <laughs> he walks in and he goes, Dana, is there any food left? Because I'm hungry. And then he sees that there's two more people in the kitchen. He's like... Hello, I I am Lord Oskin. I am Lord of the Manor. Who are you two? For our listeners, uh, Lord Oskin has got a right pout on at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I love the pursed lips. Yes, what are you two doing in my kitchen? I don't know. It was your kitchen. And Jazana's like, oi, 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 you. You be polite to these two. They've been, they've been helping out quite a lot today. I'm Orin. I'm Scepter. Hello, Orin. Hello, Scepter. We've been... We're just here helping help- out, aren't we? Yeah, helping out for the day. What about you? What do you, what do you do? What do you do, my love? I live here. Um, I was looking for some food. Is there any food? Yeah. Yeah, there's some leftover. I can, we can sort you out a tray. I can bring one up. Please do. Um, yes, I will be in my bedroom. <laughs> Thank you. And he sort of like walks away trying to look all like, ha ha. 
Uh, yeah, finally a servant's doing something I tell them. Ha <laughs> ha. And Jazana sort of, she turns around afterwards like, I'm really sorry about him. He's he's just getting to that age, you know, he, he's wanting to push some boundaries, push some boundaries. Do you know what? If I've seen it once, I've seen it a hundred times. I tell you, why don't I take him up his food, give you a bit of a break, you can hang out down here. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. You don't have to do that, darling. I'll do it. I don't mind. Do you know what? You have been so nice to us and so accommodating. It's the very least I can do. Well, you know, it's it's nice to make friends. You know, that's all I'm saying. And uh, from what I'm hearing from, from Lord Trimp, he's got quite an eye on your missus, your, your lady. So oh, she's a lovely lady. Isn't she, though? I did see her and I thought that's a very nice looking lady. I'll be honest, I kind of looked like that when I was younger. Uh, so it, it takes me right back, it does. Oh, she's more than just her looks, though. She is a tenacious one. Don't judge her by appearances. I'll be honest with you, you need someone to, we need someone tenacious to take, take care of Lord Trimped, because otherwise he's going to be a lazy so-and-so, I can tell you that for nothing. Do you think? Do you think so? Oh, yeah. I mean, his art's in the right place, but he's, you know... He needs he needs someone to give him a right kick up the bum sometimes. Right, she is the one to do that. I think so. The lady thinks so too. She thought that Atrella might have been the one, but then when you lo- when you lot started coming round, it, it seemed obvious that it were going to be young Lady Rose there. So she took she took a shine to her immediately, like before we even came here. As soon as Trim mentioned her, yep, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. She was uh, she seemed very keen. Oh, does do she does she know her fa- familiarly? Yeah, we we do know the Rose family. Um, we did a little bit of like they did some of that building work for that for that folly out there. So. Oh yeah, what is that by the way? Oh, it's I I don't know. It's posh people, isn't it? They do, they got money, they spend it. But it have they got odd. money though? That's the question. They got enough money, yeah. I tell you, I tell you, they it, they cost a. Can I insight check that, please? Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, it cost a fair amount of money, that tower, so it made sense that, uh, you know, if they didn't have the money for that, I don't know where they're getting it from. Well, that's true. 18, for is she lying? 18, she's not, she's not necessarily lying. You get the impression that they had a lot of money, but it cost mm-hmm. a lot to build the folly. So, like, she's, she's, not, she's not saying, oh, they're poor now, but yeah, there is, like, that edge to her voice that you're like, uh oh. It's, it's not necessarily the whole truth. And obviously, she's already told you that they've sold stuff to pay for it as well. Yeah. And what exactly, why, what, what is it for? I just don't get it. I don't know. I think it's like an investment for the future. It's, uh, you know, to try and drum up some... <laughs> oh. Bless you, Gwendolyn, upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> is that your lady? Should we go run her a tissue? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shall I take her a tissue? <laughs> <laughs> it's an yeah, it's an investment for the future. It's uh it's to try and it's like buying property. You know what I'm saying? That like you you gotta put money into things so that in the future you can sell them on if you need to. I don't quite get the value of it. It's just a tower, isn't it? Just like a ruined one that's falling down. It's supposed to be decoration, that's all I know. Anyway, don't mind me, none. I'm going to run this food up. Oh, I, do you know what, Jasana? We insist. You yeah. put your feet up, love. We'll You've take You've been it on up your you. on your legs all day. All right, you run it up. You run it up. Tell you, what, you you two have a rest as well. You're supposed to be guests here, and you've been doing after work after work for me. That's what we're here for, isn't it? He's got. I tell you what, he's got. He's got to learn all these kind of things. He's much more about the tech than he is about the manual service. So it will do him a favor if I tell him how to do this correctly. If you know what I mean. That would be helpful, actually. Mm. All right then. All right then. You carry on. I'll finish. I'll finish the drying up and packing away. Um, all right. And you lot, you you both go have a sit down upstairs as well. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll grab the tray. Where Where are we going? Um. So um. Oskin's. Uh. Oh, where is Oskin? He's up on the third floor. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, second floor. Sorry. He's. Uh. You, you just said right the way up. Follow the stairs up, and then he's got a little red door. That's his one. A red door. Sure, yeah. we won't miss that. No, well, all the others are just plain wood. He he was very insistent that it's be painted red. Anyway, off you go then. Come on. Grab the tray. Sorts out a quick tray with like a, a sandwich, loads of like cuts of, of stuff that were, that was left over. Tries to chuck a couple of like bits of fruit, a couple of apples on there, but she's like, you won't eat them, but they're there anyway. Um, and like gives it to you and sends you off. Outside, everybody going for a lovely stroll through the grounds. Trimped. 
is sort of walking ahead, trying to sort of chat to Gwendolyn with everybody else falling behind. Uh, and Lady Vondell seems to be encouraging this by striking up conversation with Gaius and Enkidu. Yes, I must say, it, 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 it was wonderful listening to perform earlier. Uh, Gaius, is it? Uh, yes, yes, my lady. Um, thank you very much for your kind offer, and I assure you I will take your, uh, uh, your, your, your job offer with serious consideration. I mean, it's, it's, it's every bit worth the money, I can assure you. And um, Enkidu, would you say, for example, everything went well with, uh, b- between the young lord and lady there? Don't they look a smashing pair, don't you think? Are we ahead or behind them? Or? Uh, behind them. So they're, they're Gwendolyn and Trimp to sort of walking ahead. Well, if you forgive um, my bluntness, uh, my lady, I'd say it's maybe too soon to tell. But they do seem to be getting along just fine. And, and it pleases you greatly. So I, I can see where your enthusiasm stems from. Yes. I mean, it, I have worried for the poor boy. You see, he's, uh, he likes to ride around the town, but he, he, he's not often met other, other people of nobility. He's, he is quite picky about uh, who he's interested in, and he seems to have taken a liking to her, so I'm, I'm just all for that. It's just quite exciting for a mother to see, uh, to see her children fall in love. Insight check. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, uh, it's a, a, uh, 11. 11, you know, she's, again, she's not necessarily saying anything false, but, you know, it's, it's one of those, like, it, is she just, like, playing up? her hopes as opposed to like anything that's actually been said my lady if i can uh just inquire out of interest um mm. you are of course a um a, a very well off um uh family and uh i can imagine trim would be like you know uh, an absolute catch for any nobility in any other settlement i'm just curious like why didn't you uh send him off to uh you know any other like towns or homesteads where there's like you know other wealthy so and so, as if 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 the local um, taste isn't to his like satisfaction. We did. We have we have sent him around, and obviously, I I have a few friends in in another settlements, a few up in Rost Hall, uh, uh, Vernock Rise. Uh, the trouble is, is that of course um, we're not necessarily the the highest of the of of the high, if you know what I mean. We status wise, we aren't we we rank fairly low, and uh, and so his whilst he is. As I'm sure you can agree, a very, very handsome young man. Unfortunately, uh, those with with young uh, daughters uh, who are looking to marry them off, quite often um, look to the to the the higher tiers of society and and overlook poor Trimped. Out of interest, because we've like um, we've 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 travelled with her lady Gwendolyn um, mm. for quite a bit, not too much, but just a little bit. Enough to get to know her and her high standing and stuff. How rich is her family? Ah. Out of interest, the roses. Yeah, we talking like we talking like jewels galore. Are we talking like they do like like a swimming pool of like coins? <laughs> can I have? A, can I sneakily kind of like shoot him a glare? As the, uh, and shake my head like no, don't don't do that. Don't ask that. <laughs> <laughs> the the roses they are a they are a fascinating family. Whilst they obviously have noble blood in them. They have become invaluable to or almost everybody through through her father's business. Do you know much about her father's business? Again, Enkidu is like trying to look at Gaius without giving away. Like, don't, 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 don't play into this. Don't do that. You know nothing. Okay. Well, like clocking that, I'll just be like, just enough that we, um, I haven't met him personally. I'm very new to this convoy of security checking. But, uh, you know, um... I just know that he's a man of, of his word, and his word is as good as his gold, and his gold is very nice so far. So I just wanted to check if that was, um, you know, gonna come through at the end of this. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure as, as long as you protect Gwendolyn, then you will be rewarded by her family. Hey, whoa, pr- protect. I'm just here for the, for the party time. This guy here, this beast of a man, he is here for the protection side. Oh yes, but you're all you're all very very nice young men. I can see, for example, that uh, a young lady out on the road you she could have quite easily been. Well, I dread to think it, but you've all shown shown great care and 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 protective natures, all of well, thank you. Thank you. Honor is its own reward, my lady. And I just nod respectfully. I'd like you, Enkidu. I do rather hope that that Gaius here accepts our offer. That perhaps we can encourage Gwendolyn to stay and and then that would mean that that you could stay around as well Enkidu that just would that would be nice that's flattering my lady thank you for your sentiment 
you just see guys lean behind her and give you like a knowing look on her and his eyebrow like lifts up once or twice <laughs> and then goes back to like walking <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I like the idea that that's a mechanic that's also built into the mask, that as well as his eyebrow, he's got a mask eyebrow <laughs> that just like. Eyebrow. <laughs> 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 you, see, you see his mask like just shift a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, out at the front, Trimpton Gwendolyn, uh, as you're sort of strolling around the south side of the house, you, you move through the trees and approach the folly as it appears. He says, Well, of course, you saw it last night, but doesn't it look glorious in, in the daylight? It really is some of the best craft and handiwork I've seen my father create. It really is it was quite stunning to be in in the presence of it. Yes, um, I think so too. And of course, it looks as damaged as anything, doesn't it? But it, you know, it, it, does, it just gives it that air of, of history, of prestige, you know. Yes, yes. She's yes. doing really well at convincing him that that she's totally on board but yeah. <laughs> yeah um did you see uh did you see the view of the town from the the balcony oh no i didn't no i'd love to see that oh come with me come with okay. me and he takes your hand <laughs> um and sort of leads you forward um up the small set of stairs to the balcony and looking out over the town sort of it's it's sort of gone midday at this point probably like one half one two o'clock in the afternoon that it's like the sun's just starting just starting to dip it's but it's casting a really glorious light through the town, especially with a few clouds passing overhead as well. Like, you get these little streams of, of sunlight just hitting different roofs, and the town just does look very quaint. It looks really picturesque in this light. Oh, my, that, that's actually quite breathtaking. I, I'm, I must say I'm feeling a little homesick, looking at your, your quaint little town and... It's reminding me very much of my own. Tell me more about Pride, and I would... I've never been, of course. Should like to see it someday. Oh, it's, it is a very special place, yes. Um, my father did a lot to really help the townspeople and to to grow what we had there. There was a time when it was n- almost being run into the ground, and, and my father worked with people. He helped to establish a council that would run it all, and he really is one of the most amazing people I've ever met, and he really... He works so very hard. Yes. Well, seeing seeing the manual your father sent over to instruct this, it's, I can imagine that they they get that drive from from him. It's, yes. it's much harder to encourage some like sort of that effort, that uh, that dedication to the craft. Of course, yes. Yeah. It, and yeah. I mean, I'm I don't always I'm not always privy to my father's projects. I wonder what's the purpose of this tower. He sort of pauses, looks back at the others um, who, the rest of you, you are slowly approaching, uh, in- Inkidu Guy and, and Lady Mondell, slowly approaching the uh, the folly, she's she's trying to give Trimpt and Gwendolyn as much space as possible she gives him a soft touch on the arm Oh. he uh, sort of looks down, he, he turns his back and just very quietly he says it's a, a safe haven of sorts oh, somewhere that you can go to if you need to? yes, exactly just in case of any dangers right yes do you, do you encounter many dangers no no we we haven't so far but mother seems certain that something's coming insight check yeah. go for it yeah come on oh that was an echo <laughs> Boom. dramatic roll <laughs> <laughs> uh that's a 14 14 yeah he seems to be telling the truth hmm. well it's yeah some kind of safe house Seems very savvy, savvy thing to have. Always good to be ready. I was wondering, you know, I, I was wondering. I know sometimes that my father gets involved with um with memorials, uh, and I I don't mean to pry, but I obviously know that your your father passed. I I wondered if perhaps it was some sort of memorial to him, some sort of vault or. No, I don't think so. No. Um, I suppose it could have been nice to to dedicate the place to him, but uh, no, he's uh. Over at the shrouded chapel, that's where all of the Vondells have been buried for 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 generations. <laughs> uh, it's nice to sort of keep our our family line over that way. Of course, oh. But I suppose if if that's where all of the uh, the older generations their memorials are kept, perhaps this is a a memorial of sorts to the future. Well, here's to the future. Again, just like slightly touches your hand as you're both looking out over the town. Back inside, Orin, Juna, heading upstairs with tea and, and food. Tea and food. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I'll just sort of maybe quietly mutter to June on the way up. So do we want to have a little look around while we're doing this? Absolutely. Shall we accidentally visit a couple of other rooms before we find Austin? I don't think her directions were very good. If no, I found them drift. very unclear myself. Was it a blue door or was it a wooden door? I just I can't Some quite sort of remember. Colour. I don't remember. My mind's not what it used to be. No, no, I can't. I wasn't paying attention. I was getting the food ready. Uh, where, 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 like, what do we see as we go up the stairs? It's, um, it's quite a, a grand stairway that sort of loops around on itself. So you go up to the first floor and there's a fairly long corridor. Either way, there's, uh, there's a double doors at one end toward the east. There's uh, other sort of little doors and rooms off of the corridor. You could head up again, and that's where you've been told that Oscan's room is. Now, I can't remember if she said the first or second floor. Can you, Warren? I think... I can't remember that she said the second floor. <laughs> Shall we have a check and see if it's the first floor, yeah? I think maybe let's have a look on the first floor. Yeah, Just... it can't do any harm, can it? No, no harm. Um... I'm so excited that Juno and Orin are exploring together. It's making <laughs> me really happy. <laughs> I'm just trying to recall from my notes where that room with the necromancy going on was. <laughs> yeah, I was just was looking through the notes at the exact same thing. I've just written woman in window in gown. Uh, main house blue. First woman in the a uh, first window in the back to the east. I have a little poke around the first floor. Please don't get caught. Please don't get caught. Nah, get caught. That'd be funny. <laughs> but we're just delivering food. Yeah, make a just make a general investigation check. Yep. Both of us. Yeah, you can both make one as you're sort of like slightly splitting up down the corridor. Not great. Nine. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> so you do find that a lot of the doors are locked so uh of the interesting ones in the corridor there is the double door at the end uh and that one's there locked. is and that one's that yep that one's definitely locked yep so there's the double door at the end there's um there's one or two on the way to that double door there's one or two other little side doors um which you sort of have a listen and there doesn't seem to be any movement inside any of them so and no movement behind the double door either no 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 and they're all up. Which way is east? <laughs> um, I suppose to your left. And where's the double doors? To the left. Did, now, did she say through a double door? Oh, I think she said he'd got very uppity and insisted on double doors. I think I you're right. I feel that's, like that's what she said. Yeah, I think I think that's where oh, that's where we're going. Mm-hmm. So, you, yeah, you walk down and, and like, like I say, it is locked. Uh, you're welcome to try and open it. Yep. I really want to. I have no <laughs> yep. skills in it I will, at all. I will just sort of quietly look over at Judah and just sort of go, mm-hmm, sort of like keep an eye on the stairs is the look mm-hmm. that I'm giving you. Mm-hmm. And pull out from my, uh, from a little pouch around, uh, a little sort of bandolier around, around my chest, a couple of little uh, intricate looking tools and uh, mm-hmm. have a little uh, fiddle with the door. See if I can uh, do anything about that. With my thieves' tools. Sure, make a yeah, make a thieves' tools check. Awesome. Oh, not not great, not great, guys. I'm actually going to give you advantage for this because it was closed by Gaius in a sort of hurry. Not that I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's the thing. Oh, even worse. Uh, that is only a eleven. It's actually yeah, not not that well locked. So you 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 stick your your little tools in, have a fiddle, and it clicks open. And inside, it's um. It's uh, a study of sorts. There's some tables around the edge. It's uh, There's some sort of shelves with loads of books on. On each of the desks, there's little piles of books and, and notebooks and things like that. There's a few cabinets of, of spell components, uh, one with only two wands in it. That's odd. Uh, <laughs> and right in the middle of the room, um, in the middle of the room is this large old table, uh, this sort of round table. Um, with three rings of of, of runes on them, um, and, a, and a single sort of metallic reflective disc in the centre. Now that looks intriguing. Mm. Can can I make like a history check to see if it's anything? Is that the right check to make? See if yeah, I you understand can make a history it? check. See if yeah, and see if you um, well, Arcana to understand the runes, but. Um, but a history check if you like have heard any stories about it or something similar. I mean, I'll, I'll have a look at the runes if you want. Yeah, and I'll I'll do I'll see yeah the history behind it. Mm-hmm. Fourteen for history. Fourteen. So 
Yeah, you don't necessarily completely know what this is, but you have heard of stories of of um, artifacts and uh, magical objects that that sort of match this description. Yeah, like they're they're all like in like random little his um like fairy stories and like children's stories of like magical tables and and flying whatevers. It, so you're not sure whether or not like any of those necessarily like match up with this, but you know you okay. you you clearly know that it's it's an old magical thing that has probably found its way into a story like that. Okay. Um, I rolled a seventeen to have a, a look at the the arcane symbols. Mm. Um, so yeah, with Juna chatting through like the story thing as well, and you uh, having a look at the symbols between the two of you, you do decide that it is a kind of divination table, like a divination clock, almost Ooh. that you can set the dials to certain things and catch a a glimpse of time into the future. What? Oh my gosh! What would we have a clue how to use it? Yeah, I'm so there <laughs> with you. <laughs> you could certainly, you could certainly try and use it. Oh, I don't know. Lit Lauren, I am up for this. If you are giving it a jolly good go, I mean, I feel like how often are you in a room with a, a table that tells you the future? I think we got to give it a go. Let's let's try. What's the worst that can happen? I mean, I don't want to answer <laughs> that question because I feel like the answer is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look at the table. Yeah. <laughs> Try it. Um, whoever would like to, um, I'll let you make an arcana check to try and work it. Or I suppose one of you could do it with advantage if the other person's pointing out different runes and things. I, I tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put my hand on Orin's shoulder and say, Orin, you've got this, and give him guidance. Oh, nice. Yeah. So an advantage. Uh, you've got a, a 1d4 if you need it. Now, here's a question. I get a D4 because of reasons. Anyway, mm-hmm. do I get to add my extra D4 as well? Yeah, slap it all on if you want to. All the D4! And it's still going to be a five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we're doing okay. We're doing okay so far. Adding the D4s. That's a 25. Ooh. 25, Ooh. perfect. Come on, let's go, let's go. Um, obviously, this is just a test. So you're like, yeah. don't want to push it too far. Mm. Um, how much time ahead do you want to look? Oh my god! <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, like you, like once as soon as you sort of start moving the dials, uh, where you're standing, there's like little little runes in front of you start lighting up, um, and very quickly, especially with your like mechanical, magical mind, and with Juna pointing out like different symbols for different things, you do completely understand and you can see a path through to what it is that you want so yeah how far ahead are you looking what do we think juna i I mean do we want to start small and find out what's gonna happen tomorrow and see what's gonna happen today if you catch my drift and then we can yeah should we look into tomorrow if we can like short term Yeah. yeah yeah cool so 24 hours is that roughly what you're yeah write that down wonderful so you're stood there <laughs> all five of you are dead <laughs> um, and it starts you start turning these dials uh, and like I say the little runes are directly in front of you are lighting up and as you turn each dial like in toward the reflective disc um, the whole disc sort of like shimmers ripples like it's water uh, and Juna you see this and then the whole thing just like rises into like a little spherical globule that's sort of floating just above it and then almost as soon as it's there, like there's a brief flash of light, and then there's nothing. Nothing. Like, not like as in surrounded, as in it's a reflective disc again, all of the runes have stopped, huh. and you're just, you're stood there, Juna stood there. So... When, when you say nothing, is it like, do, do we, it, does it, yeah, does it look like it hasn't worked, or does it look like there is nothing tomorrow? It looks like it hasn't worked. Huh. Hmm. Okay, I thought I'd figure that out. I thought uh, you'd figured that out. That looked right, but that—that that is not how it goes in the stories. What do you mean? Normally, you can see into the future in the stories um, I've heard. 
All right, okay, yeah. Should we try a bit further into the future, see if it's a bit more of a long-range kind of thing? Well, try next week. Maybe next year? Yeah. You can give it another go if you want. Let's give it another go. Make another Arcana check. Can I give him guidance again? Uh, yeah, just, it's a yeah. cantrip, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If you want to. Um, is, this, is this with help or is this just a straight roll? Wait. Uh, not with advantage, cool, cool. yeah. Straight just roll. straight roll. Straight roll. Okay. Non-natural 20. I mean, that's nice as well, isn't it? <laughs> um, with that sort of 20, um, as you start turning the dials, there is no magic at all in them. Uh, so the whole thing isn't reacting to you in the same way. Um, but with the 20, you get the impression that that's because the magic has worked. Whoa. And so it cannot have worked again. Are we in tomorrow? <sighs> Oh my god, we're, t- oh. we're in tomorrow. We're in tomorrow. We're in tomorrow. Okay. Jeez, what? What has happened? Oh god. Um, um, uh, I look out the window. Does it look different out the window? Nope, same time of day. Oh my god. Do you know we're in tomorrow? Okay. Uh, do, are we, uh, Juna is not nearly as flummoxed as me, but I can't believe what's going on out oh of game. Oh my gosh, what? Juna is very calm, but Vicky is sweating. <laughs> um, <laughs> d- uh, ooh, okay. Is this what you were we... hoping would happen, DM, yeah? <laughs> uh, I mean, this is a very different reaction to what I was expecting, but this is funny. <laughs> Can we be seen? I don't know if we can be seen. I can see you. I can see you. But we're both here. But are we both here? Like, did we just go missing yesterday? <laughs> and like, do we get back? How do we get back? Can we get back? Are we just in tomorrow now? Is this now, is this just now where we live? Do we just live in tomorrow? <laughs> I think what we need to do, Orin. <laughs> Is find the others. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not sure we can get back to yesterday, can we? Or can, we? <laughs> can I look at the table and see if we can get back to yesterday in some way? Um, yeah, you reckon you could figure it out using the table again, or like, or like to stop the uh, to stop it. Yeah. Okay, I reckon there's a way of stopping it, but now we're here. We need to find out what's happening, get back yep. here, and go back to yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's okay. D&D Back to the Future. <laughs> this is blowing my mind, I'm not gonna lie. Oh dear. Okay. Um, let's let's make our way out. Do, and let's are, let's are try not to be seen. Or are we pretending yeah. that we're here? Well we're not meant to be here tomorrow, probably. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe we are here tomorrow. But in which case, right. are we here twice? I don't know. What I do know, though, is we shouldn't walk out the front gate. No, nope, that is definitely <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Lesson learned. Oh, God, I think we need to... Uh, do we take the tea and the, tr- the tray of food with us? <laughs> is, is the tea and the tray of food, has that travelled into the future? <laughs> that's it's still there where you left it. No, I, d- I think that's going to be really late. I think that's going to be really confusing. We leave it here. When we go back to yesterday, today, we deal with the food then. We- all right. We can't we can't take him his food a day late. <laughs> oh my god. But what if someone finds the food today? Oh, we'll hide the food. We'll hide the food. Hide the food. Okay. Should we hide Is it under some of these wands? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird because it looks like there should be a third wand, but let's just hide the food behind them. We hide the yeah, food. We're gonna st- we're gonna st- we're gonna stow the food. Um, okay, we're we'll about dilly just dally. Another, um, in a cupboard, you know. Yeah, if there's a cupboard on a shelf, or a shelf yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. Shove it in a cupboard. And then we're going I'm gonna have well, where we we should probably have a peek out of the door and check that we can yeah. leave the yeah. room. And check check what's around. Yeah. And make a make a quick perception check as you start edging your way out. Okay. Um both of us or Juno, do you want to take the lead? Uh whoever wants to. I'll, yeah, let you have advantage yeah. as you both. Juno, you roll with advantage. Cool. Perception sixteen. Doesn't sound like there's anyone in the corridor, so you open it just a tiny little bit. Definitely no one there. You've got a free, clear path. All right, let's... Uh, to the stairs, at least. Let's get to the stairs. Yep, yep, yep. So we stealthily go to the stairs. There's a brief noise of somebody um, on the floor above you in the corridor. Okay, we shouldn't go upstairs. Let's go back down. 
Okay, back, back down. down and out the servants' quarters, then over the bush. No, we need to. We have to come back in and come back to to, to today, yesterday. We we can. I, I think I can stop the table. I think I can send us back. But we need to find out anything we need to know from today, tomorrow. Maybe you're <laughs> really good with people and stuff, much better than me. Maybe you. I don't know. See if um, what's the face? Jasana's Jasana? around. Yeah, let's yeah. go see Jasana. Yes, thank you for bringing me back, Orin. Yes, let's go and see Jasana. Yeah. Um, so as you um, you head down the stairs uh, toward the kitchen, uh, Jazana stood there washing up. Did he say thank you at least? What did she say? Sorry, say that again. Did him. he say thank you at least? Did he say thank you at least? <laughs> <laughs> We're not in tomorrow at all. <laughs> How did you? Oh my God. Come on. <laughs> So you assumed you had time travelled, but in fact you had not. So you're... <laughs> not at all. <laughs> through nothing, but through their own assumptions, they've just had ten minutes of convincing themselves they were a day ahead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> and now his food's hidden in a cupboard somewhere. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> I'm so sad. I thought we were tomorrow. I really thought we'd time travel. <laughs> or it's so sad. <laughs> oh, my oh, do you know what? We didn't make it to his room. We realised that. Um, well, where'd you put the food then? It's just, oh, just... <laughs> we just left it on the stairs. We realised that there wasn't any bread. Now, that's not true, <laughs> Miss Scepter. I put a whole loaf of basic bread on there, a big old chunk to go up with it. Did you? Oh, do you know what? I am I'm all over now, the you place. Now, you too. You too. Listen, if you're hungry, if you're hungry, I don't <sighs> mind giving you more bread. You don't have to nick it off poor Oskin's plate. I did get a bit hungry. Like, I, I think it was this thing, all that lunch. Orin, did you eat that bread out. on the tray? I did. I'm sorry. I should have told you. Do you do you mind, Jasana, giving us some more bread? And we'll, t- we'll take it up to him. It got, it's in the cupboard there. You Go on, help yourself. And, and Orin, you just... You can just eat the bread if you want more food. I got more oh, food. Thank, oh, thanks. That's, that's really kind. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Maybe a biscuit to go with the tea. You two walk off entirely disappointed in your own belief. I think we have a moment where we just sort of look at each other and have a bit of a hysterical laugh like we are literally doing right now. Of like, And then also, I'm just going to say to Judah, okay, we're not telling the others about this, all right? Never. <laughs> no, this is, this is our secret. We take this to the grave, all right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Now, do you think you can get us back into that room? Yeah, I think so. (laughs) Grace here, just popping into the manor with a few exciting bits and bobs. For all of you who love singing along to our fabulous theme tune, you may have noticed that we have released it as bonus content. Now you can prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice on repeat. Don't forget that our wonderful Vicky is currently touring in Open Bar's production of The Tempest. So if you want to see her in action, listen to more of David's brilliant music and look at my pretty costumes. You can catch them in Fuller's Pub Gardens until the 1st of October. But the excitement doesn't stop there, as we have not one, but two special celebratory shout-outs this week. A massive congratulations to the man behind the mask, good bard, our very own charismatic Chris, who recently asked his gorgeous girlfriend Jenny to marry him. And she said yes. We wish you both a bountiful betrothal. We'd also like to wish a very, very happy birthday to the most enthusiastic D&D player we have ever met. Please raise your tankards to our delightful Daryl. We hope you're feeling the no small roles love. If you would like to have a shout out or advert of your very own on this show, you can do so by sponsoring us. Simply email nosmallroles at hotmail.com and we'll see what we can do. As always, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at nosmallroles and find our Facebook page by searching No Small Rolls. Rolls spelt R-O-L-L-S as in Rolls Royce, a fancy schmancy kind of car that I will never be able to afford. 
If you're enjoying the podcast so far, please do leave us a positive review and rating on iTunes. It's a really great way of helping more lovely listeners like yourselves to find us. Huge thanks to those of you who have already rated us and bonus thanks to Cinemods and Billow Buzzkill for your lovely reviews. That's all from me for now. Let's take you back to the mystery. Um, so back outside, um, Lady Vondell is, uh, has finally reached the folly with Gaius and Enkidu. Um, she says, uh, oh, well, um, I'm sure you saw it last night, but what do you think of it in the daytime? Absolutely stunning. It's really one of the most, uh, interesting pieces I've seen. It, the way that it looks so very old and yet only been built a few months ago even and and the st- yes not long the view of the town my my it is stunning it is it is are you happy with it she sort of goes quiet for a moment um and there's almost like a glazed look over her eyes um so she looks back and she says i'm so sorry um and then she just sort of almost collapses onto the floor. Oh my gosh. And Kiddy tries to ca- catch her. Yeah, as does Gwen. Let's say, like, uh, both of you, well, Gwen, if you're sort of like still coming down the stairs, and Kiddy make a, like a dex saving throw. Oh wow, that's not bad. Dex saving throw. Yeah, so that's a 17. Yeah, so it's definitely fast enough. You, you just, man, you get um, a hand under her neck. So as she's like slumps, you like completely catch her. Is this like full on tango pose catch? Yeah, almost. Like, <laughs> she is... You've lunged and just, like, managed to catch her. She is, like, inches from the floor. My lady, are you... Trimped, Trimped runs down the stairs. Um, he sort of runs over to her and just says, I'm, Oh, I'm so sorry. She, she, she gets like this sometimes. Um, what, uh, could I trouble uh, you two gentlemen to carry her back into the house? She'll wake up shortly. Uh, of course, sure, of course. I, I pick her up. Um, as I've got her in my hands, this is weird. I, I, I promise I'll stop doing this if this means nothing. I'm going to try and um, reach inside myself and ask, what, can I feel something from her? Is, what, what's going on here? Make a charisma check. Straight charisma. Is there an alpine cow yes. in this? <laughs> <Totally. laughs> it, it bounced off the tankard. Um, 22. 22. There is a, a strange rush of little voices, like loads of whispers. Almost as if for a moment you can hear them talking to each other. Then you hear a very gentle voice. So it sounds female, but you know who it is. And they just say, We think she's dangerous. Be careful, Kai. I kind of, um, yeah, like intrinsically say, Thank you, my, my heart. I'll take care. None of the others can hear that, but yeah. Um, I, I carry a, um, uh, my lord, where would you like us to take her? Where, 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 where do we go? Back to the house. Uh, if you just take a call for Jazana, Jazana will, will, will show you her room. Okay. Um, and Trimpt is trying to be fairly gentlemanly and like almost shield Gwendolyn from his poor fallen mother um, and make sure that Gwendolyn isn't too upset, having checked his mother over. Uh, but as, as uh, sort of he encourages Enkidu and Gaius to, to walk away, he does say, I'm, I'm, I'm so very sorry, Lady Rose. She gets like this sometimes. It's, 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 it's her new pastime, unfortunately. She's, she's fallen... Rather hard for her magic. Oh, that was magic related. Yes, um, it's. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but she's she's just gotten quite confused of late. Quite. Uh, well, I I don't even know how to say it. Just confused. That sounds like it must be very hard for you. I think so. I think it's she's worried for us. That's 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 what it is. And, and uh, I mean, it must be so difficult without without your father around and. What about, I believe your aunt lives with you? Is she, is she some comfort? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the two of them are very close. Not that Aunt Metz spends much time during the day in the house, but they, they talk most evenings. Oh, um, where does your aunt spend her time? Surely your mother needs her. Well, you know, she is her own. She roams. She, uh, I think perhaps maybe that's where I get my my enjoyment of, of, of travelling. Uh, not that I've travelled far, but at least of, of the outdoors. Um, Aunt Auntie Metz, she she goes for long, long walks during the day. I suppose there are so many interesting places around here. Well, the Lockhart Holt Wood, for one. 
Well, yes, I mean, this is very dangerous. I, I couldn't imagine she'd spend much time in there. No. But, uh, no, I suppose she probably doesn't. It would be very interesting to meet her at some point. Well, um... If I'm meeting, yes, you know, the rest of your family. Well, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll all become quite well acquainted. Well, I suppose with your your mother being unwell, it's um, it's not right for us to trespass upon your hospitality any further. It's it's no trouble to me, but uh, yes, I should probably go and see her. You're quite right. Yes, yeah, I mean, I mean, if it is no trouble to you, perhaps whilst they're distracted, you you could show me a bit more of this tower. I I know there's. There's something underneath, and well, I don't. <laughs> it could be quite fun to go in there and have a look. Yeah, it's sort of like a cheeky little look on his face, but make a make a persuasion check. Persuasion. That's seventeen. Well, I can't show you everything. Oh no, I I wouldn't want to see everything. <laughs> but he uh, he walks over to the uh, to the little brick that you noticed the the night before. Presses it, turns it. The t- uh, the tiled floor opens up. And he starts heading down. This is probably only as much as I can tell you, but uh, this is uh, an entrance. And uh, um, from what I hear, you've, you've possibly already seen this, but uh, if ever you were in danger, Gwendolyn, the password as it stands now, and as he sort of walked down the stairs, he sort of gets to the bottom, he just says, disaster. And the door swings open. Oh, wow. So if you were in, in need of safety, in need of somewhere to, to hide yourself... I, I would be grateful if you s- use this space. Thank you, Trim. Um And looking into the corridor that's beyond, it is, it's almost like their manor. It is slightly similar decor, slightly more modern, uh, but it is wooden lined walls. Like there's a lot more ornamentation going down it, carpeted floor. It's actually quite beautiful in there. A very well kept estate almost, and very bright. It feels like it's daytime, even though you know that you're underground. Oh my, this... This is in- incredible. How does it maybe step in a little further? I, th- I think that's probably as far as I, I probably of shouldn't course. have shown you this, no, but no, uh, no. Oh, and he sort of starts pulling the door closed. Absolute, but he says, absolute. your father really has done wonderful work in there. It's our little secret. Yes. Yeah, thank that's you nice. so much, Trimped. I feel, I feel so much safer knowing that I, I know there's somewhere that I can, I can hide if I need to. Once you're in there, um, it should be fairly easy to contact the house as well. So if ever you do need to get in... Um, at a rush, uh, yes. then then do do contact the house and. Uh, how would I do that? Uh, in 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 one of the uh, the first sitting rooms you'll come to, there's an alarm stone. Right, right, uh, an alarm. Just stone. Just activate that, and and we'll we'll know. But you wouldn't know that I was in there unless I I did the alarm stone. So I must do the alarm stone. You must do the alarm stone. Absolutely. Oh, that's so good. Thank you so much, Trimped. Well, we really must go check on your mother. Let's. Yes. Um. And so he pulls the door closed. You you both head back up. He runs over to the brick, turns it, and the whole little tiled floor. Closes again, uh, and you start returning to the house. Enkidu and Gaius, as you're carrying Lady Von Dell back, um, you have a brief moment with her unconscious in your arms. What are you doing? I say to Guy, look, friend, and I whisper, can I have a quick whip around to make sure no one else is listening or if there's any other devices that can like um, spy on us, like the owl? Mm, make a perception check. Can I help him? Because he... I. I've surmised what he's trying to do. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, one of you can make it either separately or one of you with advantage. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, 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 not good. That, that's not bad. That's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Um, yeah, looking around the grounds as you sort of pass through, um, there actually doesn't seem to be a huge amount of surveillance out here. Um, and even as you get toward the house, the house itself doesn't seem that well monitored. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I slow down my pace a bit and I, I whisper to guys, look, I'm about to explain something to you. Um, I don't understand it myself, but I have a kind of power I don't understand. It's a kind of advisory. It kind of speaks to me. Sometimes it's detrimental. Sometimes it's, it's, it's helpful. And this time it was helpful. And as soon as Lady Von Del fainted, I reached out for this power and it told me Lady Von Del is dangerous. Obviously, we suspected her. That's not really helpful, anything new, but the person herself is dangerous. Now, I'm, I, I feel quite dirty saying this as she's limp and unconscious in, my, in our arms, but we, we're not safe. We should probably just get her inside. I, I, my mind is reeling. 
right now. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I completely agree. But in the meantime, I'm going to look through her pockets. <laughs> <laughs> and Akiru blinks and goes, oh my gosh, of course. Yeah, go for it. Like, what did I think about? <laughs> I'm going to look through her pockets. Uh, yeah, make a quick investigation check. Okay. Uh, 15. 15. So she actually doesn't have that many pockets, which is interesting, but you give like her a good search. The, the interesting things that you find about her, there's loads of pocket fluff. Uh, but tucked onto the inside of the gilet is a small knife and the only other thing of any value that she has is a a ring on her finger um, that stands out it doesn't seem to be a wedding ring it's not that kind of a thing Um, it's a small little golden band with a with a little red gemstone embedded in it with quite nice little sort of filigree ingrained around it Um, I'm just going to slip that ring off her finger (laughs) and pocket it Sure. We'll say she it fell off as we were rushing to get inside. You, my friend, are a clever person. We can have Aubrey look at it later. Yeah, it's a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And she hasn't got any like jewelry. Okay, that you know what? No, nope. the ring is fine. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> and we go into the house, yeah. Grab it together and like try and keep her as much as possible. As we get towards the house, can we just make a big shout of like Ho, oh, hello, help! The lady doth fall over. Come, help your yeah, master. Especially as you're passing like the entrance to the, the servants' quarters, Jizana does step out. She's like, Oh, she she has she fallen faint again. Yes, so this has happened before. It's it's happening more and more regular, unfortunately. Right, uh, follow me. And she sort of leads you around to the front of the house, up to the top floor, sort of it. And after a while, especially with the two of you, it's you know, it's it's okay to carry her. You're being quite gentle. Um But uh as you're sort of coming round, um Oren and Juna, you've started going back upstairs <laughs> so how far up had you gotten uh i don't know i don't know how long we'd got had, had. probably about sort of 10 minutes or so i suppose since you leaving to these guys walking in so we uh, definitely would have got back in the room and got the food right got, rescued the food i assume mm-hmm. yeah locked, you, you got enough locked time for the that. door as best i can on the way back out again and yeah i guess we we would have taken the food up yeah yeah all right, yeah. Found, so found the red door. It, probably at the point that you're like, you've gotten to the first floor, you've gotten to the red door and uh, sort of knocking on it. Um, that's when Jizana and Kidu and Gaia sort of come up to the same floor as you, um, carrying Lady Vondel. And Jizana sort of leads you all through to, uh, to her bedroom, very large room, uh, big, lovely four poster bed in the center of it, loads of glorious cupboards around the outside, like lush rugs. Um, she says, just lay her down here. Just lay her down here. And she starts like pottering about, grabbing, grabbing um, sort of wash bowls and towels and things and starts like r- wringing, wringing them full of water, just laying them on her head. I'll give her a hand. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Scepter. What's happened to her? Much appreciated. That's, uh, that's not something you need to worry about, Orin. I do appreciate the concern. It would be probably better if, if we just let her rest. We find that normally after, after about half hour or so, she's back to normal. Yeah, if you all, if you all just... If you all head downstairs, I'm sure I'm sure she'll send word later. Don't you worry. Like whilst we're in the room, what is there there? Is there like is I, I want to see if anything looks weird, basically. Mm, make a make a quick just perception check. It's quite hard to do a full investigation with with Jizana sort of floating about. Natural one. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Nah. With with Jizana hurrying you out of the room, you don't really have time to 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 take any notice of. It's just having again having worked in a in a rich house, you, you it just feels like another one yeah. of those rooms that it's slightly over decorated, you know. How close am I to Jasana? Probably the other side of the bed, or or like if she's like hurrying you out, you know, she's getting quite close to like actually physically shoo you okay. away. Okay, I'm gonna take a few steps towards her. I'm gonna bow respectfully, and say, I pray for a swift recovery. And then I'm going to try and karate chop her neck to knock her out. What? What? Make an attack roll. We're going off the ranch, people. What? 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 What is happening? What? <laughs> what is going on? What? Do I add any modifiers to that, or just? It would be a strength modifier. Oh, that's fine. Uh, that's a sixteen. Sixteen. Cool. Um, it's so damage is one plus your strength. <laughs> um, so that's a one. <laughs> <laughs> my, my strength is a is a ten, so it's a plus zero. Um, so you just whack Jizana in the neck. Oh my god. 
she's like, what the f- Ow! What the fuck was that? I'll get that fly. And I'll like try and pretend to like run around the room and like, I I'm getting it, I'm getting it. I no way, no way. Wreck on that. Oh my god. She <laughs> said, don't mind him. He, he didn't grow up in these houses. He meant, he meant, he meant it in a in a good way, didn't you? I think, I think, I think I know exactly what he meant. You, that's horrible. That's horrible, you. Um, like seeing that this didn't work, I'm just gonna carry on. I'm gonna get her into a chokehold. I'm gonna try and grapple her. <laughs> make, it, make a contested strength. Hey, Kino, what, what the, what, what the heck? What? Give me a hand, bloody hell. <laughs> What the? Okay. Make a make a strength check. All right. Oh my god. <laughs> What'd you it's roll? Terrible anyway. It's a three. So yeah, she rolled a fourteen. So you go to grab her by the neck, and she moves out of the way. Sort of r- takes a few steps back from you, reaches a hand into her pocket, um, and just like as she like pulls her fist out, there's a small stone in it. <laughs> um, uh, and it's it's too late. You can already see that there's like it's covered in runes and it's glowing. She's like, right, you have got you have got one minute to get off the property, young man. In fact, all of you, just just go, all right? That's not nice. It's no, an old woman, absolutely. but she's trying to take care. But Matrim is coming up now, and if you don't leave, he will stab you. Look, Jasana, I understand that you're No, upset. you don't. I understand. I don't understand what you're attacking me for. This is his way. That's just the way he is. It's, it's he's just, done it to me before, hasn't he, yeah. Orange? You yeah, remember when he, he did. When he tried to choke old me and he, he did it to me, me too. In the net. Yeah. I don't care. I don't I don't care. You could just just go get out. Go yeah, away. Sorry, he's just he's very defensive. I'm going to try and grab for that st- stone. Is, is it too late? She's already activated, hasn't she? It's already activated. Do I know what that stone is? Make a quick intelligence check or an arcana check. Yeah, arcana. 17. 17. Um, it's an alarm stone. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you know, essentially, she sent yeah. uh, an alarm to everybody else. Oh. Right, okay. Don't, I'm really sorry. We're, we're, we're all going. We're all going now. I haven't quite finished my tea, but that's okay. Come on, Ankidu. See, yeah, seeing the way everyone's going, I'm going to, like... Uh, pretend like I'm, I'm a madman. I'm kind of like, but I don't understand it. It's, it was there, and she, 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 she was barking her eyes, and her, her mouth was drooling, and, and she, she's a fiend. Okay. She's okay, a fiend. We'll get you back it's to okay. the knocking it's point for a nice okay. cup of tea. She's, she's lying to you, you know, all. She's okay. a monster. She's and a monster. Okay. He's dangerous. You're he okay. I know he's, 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 he's difficult, but yeah, I tell you what. When he's in his like straight of mind, he's an excellent body guy. I swear to God, Absolutely. very reliable. As um, you can see. Very, very, you know, fast hands. Do you all make your way out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, as that's going on, I would like to hide under the bed, please. No. <laughs> and just sort of fade out of the drama. Oh, make my God. Make a, uh, a stealth check. Mm-hmm. With disadvantage, because she is watching you all. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a two and a three, so no. Know. So you start, you start seven. crawling under. You're seven overall, though, with my. And she, my and she's like, "Where are you going? What is wrong with you people? I thought you were my god." Sorry, I, my <laughs> leg just went. I tell you what, Jasana, we'll get out your hair. Yeah, come on. <laughs> also, I don't know if this is the right time to tell you, but we didn't get the tray up to. Uh, uh, Oscar. I don't care. Just go. It's just on the landing outside his room. Um, as you sort of, yeah, all like sheepishly edge out the door, as soon as you're like through the doorway, she runs over and just slams it shut. Quick, quick question. While we were in there and with Lady Vondel, etc., um, would is there any chance I would have clocked that her ring has gone missing because uh, it pinged what's, earlier? What's, uh, what's your passive perception? It is passive perception is 12. Yeah, especially as everyone's sort of fussing over her. You notice that she didn't have any rings on her finger. But you all start making your way down the stairs. Um, uh, and as you're, you're doing that, you like Dahlia comes out of one of the rooms and she's got a little short bow in her hands. She's like, you keep walking now, you keep walking. And Kidu's like twitching as if he's fit. He's calming down. He's like, I'm going to like stroke him on the head. He's okay. Yep. He's okay. False, false alarm stone. And sort of like she's very carefully just like keeping an eye on all of you, following you at a distance, walking out. I'm not really interested in leaving the property without Gwen. As you're sort of like, she's like, this is, uh, it doesn't matter, no, like you got to step out. And as you sort of carry on walking, as she, she's like walking towards you, she's like starts pulling the bow, um, 
like encouraging you to walk to the, the door, Trimpton and Gwendolyn do arrive at the front door. Gwendolyn's got a massive smile on her face. She's feeling really happy that she's just been able to do something. She's got some really important information. She's so excited to tell everyone. Gwen, I think it's time that we left. <laughs> Johnny just shouts out, um, young lord, um, Jazana might be in trouble. I think it'd be best if you head upstairs. I'll make sure these all leave the property. Uh, sorry to scare you like this, but uh, it seems to this... From the sounds of it, someone attacked her, so... Everyone's got to go now. Somebody attacked Jazana. That's terrible. Who would do such a thing? Well, one of your men. That's the trouble. She was, she was frothing at the mouth. She the tears of blood He's running down her eyes. Like, she was, you know, you know, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm so so sorry. I, w- I will get them off your property immediately and deal with him straight away. I, 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 I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I can't imagine what's happened. Trimpter sort of stood very confused. He's looking backwards and forwards. He's trimped, like runs in and he's sort of steps up next to Dali and he's like... Uh, I'm sure this will all be explained, but uh, it's probably better if you all leave now. Of course, I'm so sorry, Trimped. Me too. Rivers of blood! Right, <laughs> let's get them right. <laughs> off we go, off we go, everybody! Uh, so you make your way out of the estate, through the front gate. Is somebody going to tell me what on earth happened? So, Enkio, yeah. what was that train of thought? Because, uh, I thought we could find something in her room. So you thought to attack the staff? You attacked the staff? Yeah, I tried to knock her out and I must have missed a vital point and you, didn't... You, you do did... realise people can see when they're being hit. You didn't even go behind yeah. her. You actually interacted with her and then you smacked her in the neck. What the f- Yeah, I wasn't thinking. I was panicking inside. My Something was... I don't, I don't know about you lot, but I think we've all had quite an intense day. Yeah. Let's go get a drink. And 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 shake down what is happening here. Can't even get a proper drink though, can we? <laughs> oh, disappointment two of the day. <laughs> but back- so, can I just get this clear? So, Enkidu decided to hit a member of the staff. Yeah, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Which member of the staff did he decide to hit? Jezana. Jezana. Oh. I tell you what, Enkidu. The really old half orc lady who's very frail. She's a liar. I mean, that's not a reason to try and hurt somebody, though, surely? No, but she is a liar. I'm sure there's not one amongst us who isn't a liar. What What? what did you think you were going to find in a room? What were you... Some kind of proof of um, the things that she's dabbling into? Some kind of what kind of practice or, or books or notes, communications, anything like that? Ugh, I, I misjudged terribly, terribly. It um, gets down onto, like, his knees and, like, I... I thought I could just, because she was such a small lady and I thought I could just knock her out quickly, have a quick search of the room, then put her in a safe position and leave before she remembered anything. But well, I think if just... we've learned anything from our friend Juna here, it's that uh, that small, uh, small packages can be surprisingly tough. Yep. Oh, thanks, Sorin. <sighs> Look, Enkidu, it, it wasn't ideal, but you've learnt your lesson. No harm done, is there? No, there is plenty of harm It done. sounds like there's a great deal done. I think we need to get as far away from here as possible and really talk this through because it's... Re- I'm absolutely fuming. Okay, so we're not going to be necessarily welcome there again. Um, nope. No. But then, to be fair, I didn't think we were going to be welcome there today. I would really like to come back tomorrow, if you know what I mean, Orin. <laughs> Just give Juno a look. <laughs> a look that is like nope. tomorrow, eh? Nope. As in, as nope. in this evening. As in, we're going to break in this evening and try and blow this whole thing wide because they're going to be on high alert. Orin and I found something. Right. Well, let's get back to the knocking point and let's discuss everything we've learned and see what we can put together. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Very yeah. well. Five heads better than one. So you start uh, making your way back through town again, and as you sort of round, oh no, your past... face says something's about to happen. <laughs> A minotaur arrives. <laughs> minotaur. <laughs> Unfortunately, the whole town burns down and you die. Oh, no. Um, as you sort of round a corner, uh, making the way down the street past the guardhouse, there is uh, a small crowd outside quite, having quite an argument with, uh, with a fairly official-looking guy. Sort of his, uh, his very broad, very dark walnut skin. Um, he's got a little, little moustache, bald head. And instantly from his sta- uh, status... Like, just in the way he is presented to the crowd, you know this is the captain of the guard. Ah. But right at the front is of this crowd is Iris. And he's like, 
Yeah, but what do you mean the doctor's missing? Because, like, that is that is not something that you keep secret, Stolen. It don't matter who you are, what you think you're doing, that is not what happens. Oh, my gosh. And that's where we'll pick it up next time. Oh, my oh gosh. gosh. Oh, my uh, gosh. That was something. <laughs> oh that man. was hilarious. That was so much fun. You have been listening to David Knight as your Dungeon Master, Ben Galpin as Orin, Chris Watts as Gaius, Daryl Bailey as Enkidu, Grace Kelly Miller as Gwendolyn, and Vicky Gaskin as Juna. Original music by David Knight. Please tell your friends, subscribe and follow us on all the social medias. 